Got to make sure I got my watch for this one. You know what time it is. Jackson State. Fam you. Orange Blossom Classic. Possibly the third year in a row. The SWAC East will be won in the first week of the season. Oh, yeah. It's locked on HBCU. Play my music. You are locked on HBCU. Your daily podcast covering HBCU sports. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. going on family welcome back to another episode of the locked on hbcu podcast your number one daily one-stop shop for everything hbcu athletics monday through friday part of the locked on podcast network your team every day and i of course am darian gray aka the mouth of the south texas southern alum and former tsu herald sports editor and current contributing writer at usa today's saints wire Thank you for going on this journey with me, making Locked On HBCU your first listen of the day, every day. And remember, just because the mic cuts off does not mean that the journey is over. It just means it's time to follow me on Twitter at South Exclusive. Starts with an S and ends with an S. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On College. For $20 off your first purchase. Today's episode is like every other Friday is going to be for the next three months. We have our game of the week. Maybe you weren't here last Friday, but it's football season. Starting with week zero all the way up into the celebration bowl. Every single Friday, we will have our must watch game. And we will have three matchups, two storylines, and a key to victory for each squad. And this week, I'm excited. Because it's Jackson State versus FAMU. Wasn't sure how excited I was going to be about this game going into the season. But after what happened last week in week zero, I am extremely excited because this has the potential to be a SWAC East championship game for the third year in a row. But there's so much to this game that that is not even one of the storylines to watch. This game has so much, but I'll kick it off with Irv Mulligan versus Isaiah Major. That's my first storyline. I'm going to see my first matchup. And the reason I picked that is, A, I'm extremely partial to the linebacker position. I used to play it. It's funny enough, I guess we got two things I'm very partial to because Mulligan wears five. So I have the number five and I have a linebacker. They're not the same person, but they're going toe-to-toe. I don't know who to root for. But, no, in all seriousness, I really do love linebacker play. I really do. And Isaiah Major is one of my favorite in this conference. I think that he's an extremely talented linebacker who has the ability to flow sideline to sideline. He has a good running partner in Johnny Chaney Jr. I like both of them as a unit. And honestly, both of them are going to be needed to handle Irv Mulligan. But if I'm going to pick one running back, then I want to make sure that I picked one linebacker. And I think that Major is the leader of this unit. So you're looking at Irv Mulligan as the guy who really kicked off the Jackson State hype in 2023. First play. Short little swing out to, I think it was J.D. Martin. Second play, you had the fumble. Third play, touchdown, Irv Mulligan. First time he touched the ball. Like, this was an explosive way to just say hi. Like, this was this was like the rapper who drops a hit on his first debut single. And it's like, oh, that's what you're doing? Immediately, and he had a good game. I know we see a big play, and then we just kind of, that usually is the, the, the storyline behind his day. But he had a couple of good runs, and I really did enjoy what I saw from him as far as vision, his long speed, his patience. I really did think he was a good runner. The thing is, I also believe that Isaiah Major is one of the best linebackers in this conference. And Jackson State did a good amount of stretch plays, outside runs. And with that, you're going to have to make sure that you have gap discipline. You got to make sure that you are shooting the gap. You got to make sure that you are not getting outside of your gap. And what that means is basically you need to make sure that if you are supposed between the supposed to be between the guard and the tackle, and that's your gap, that if at any moment Irv Mulligan runs between the guard and the tackle, you're right there, not trying to jump outside the tackle because you think that's where he's going. Somebody's supposed to be there. 
And I think that Isaiah Major is a good enough player to where he will retain his gap discipline. Same with Johnny Chaney. And if you're doing stretch plays, you have to watch for the cutback. And linebackers are extremely important for the cutbacks. The thing about this is these men are not in this matchup. I know I highlighted Mulligan and Major, but the defensive line for FAMU is going to need to do work because in order for Major to have the best shot at winning this matchup between him and the running back for Jackson State, he needs to be clean. You want to keep offensive linemen away from him as, as much as possible. And when it does happen, then you want to make sure that you are disengaging from the block. I could talk about this all day. Like, I really do love linebackers. But I did mention defense alignment. So let's go to Jackson State and their defense alignment. South Carolina State couldn't get a thing going last week because of the defense alignment for Jackson State. There was no time. There was no space in the running game. I thought that uh, Howell had a good couple of runs for South Carolina State. But it was also one of the things that made him so impressive is that the defense alignment were in his face and he showed a little bit of elusiveness to get away from them. That's one of the reasons I first really gravitated and started noticing him in the middle of the game on my first watch. So that Jackson State defensive line absolutely wrecked the game. And if you give Jeremy Musa the amount of time that Corey Fields had, I don't know if you're going to be able to get much offense going. And yes, I think that Jeremy Musa is a much better quarterback than Corey Fields. But if he doesn't have enough time, I don't care who he is. Pressure can disrupt the best of quarterbacks. You got to have a game plan to get around it. You have to have a quarterback who has time to be able to get some shots down the field as well. But then the game plan is just get more quick throws so that you can not have to worry about them as much. And I think you have actually have the weapons to do that. And we stringing it all together today. The wide receivers of FAMU versus actually. It's supposed to be Jackson State, but FAMU is appropriate. So I'll just I'll go with FAMU for a moment, but this is not my third. We're going to continue with the defensive line versus offensive line. You have to give your playmakers opportunities to be playmakers if you're FAMU. You have to. In order to do that, you have to block. If that defensive line, if Davis in the middle is somebody who wrecks shop again, you might be looking at a 2-0 and Jackson State, honestly. It has that amount of a game-changing ability. And then lastly, flipping over to Fam use defensive backs versus Jackson State's wide receivers. Listen, man, I think you're going to see more of Jackson State's offense, and I think you're going to have to see more than Jackson State's offense. South Carolina State didn't force JSU to do much. JSU was able to throw yard uh, passes two yards from the line of scrimmage, forty-four yard touchdown. Like, like that's that's what we were able to see. I don't think you're going to get that a bunch against Famu. I don't know if you get it at all against Famu. I think that defense is going to be much better. I really do. Um, I, but that's okay because eventually the offense is going to have to open up. The wide receivers are getting swing passes, short passes. Like, I think you're going to have to go down the field a little bit more. I think you're going to see them do it. It's not that they're trying to avoid it. It's just, why would I do that if I know I can throw to the tight end within five yards and now it's a touchdown? Why would I do that if I know I can throw the ball to Ethan Hunt and it's a touchdown, swing pass, 15 yards? Like, why would I do more vertical passing when I'm getting effective yards from short passes when i'm getting touchdowns from short passes i'm getting explosive plays from short passes there's no reason to do it i don't think you're going to have that luxury against famu this time and famu has a strong secondary so now we'll have some answers about what does the jackson state wide receiving core look like what are they bringing to the table all of those things get answered this is a phenomenal phenomenal game with some really good matchups i love major versus mulligan that's my favorite because i think that mulligan showed breakout potential meanwhile isaiah major is a player who has been really good over the last year and is looking to carry that into this season as well so this is a great matchup that's my personal favorite which is why i let off with it but i have another big storyline it's a question that everybody wants to know about Jackson State, and that might be the biggest storyline going into it, and I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments. How good is Jackson State? Everybody has an answer. I'll give you mine or why this is something to watch as we continue with Locked On HBCU. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. And listen, nobody likes to procrastinate, but I'm sure that every single one of us is guilty of it. I know I am. And sometimes when you procrastinate, you can't get the seats that you want. 
that's no longer a problem. Listen, that's no longer a problem as long as you get the Game Time app. Just go ahead and download Game Time. Game Time. You can browse through it, see what's available. You can find all of the local sporting events, music concerts. You have uh, comedy shows. Everything with you have plays at the theater. Everything is on Game Time. It's the best place for your last minute deals it's simple it's the place to be they're going to give you the best prices and if you find something better in the same section on the same row you get 110 percent back that's why they're the fasting gro fastest growing ticketing app in the country so go ahead and snag some tickets without the stress download the game time app and use the promo code locked on college and get 20 dollars off of your first purchase game time last minute tickets lowest prices guaranteed Now, as we continue rolling on today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day. College football season is here, and Locked on is leveling up yet again because we have a live kickoff show that will be airing each Friday. So today, it will be airing each Friday, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Central Time. So 10 a.m. to noon every single day. Friday, and I'll be on there discussing my two biggest games of the week, and you know that this is one of them. So check out any Locked On College YouTube channel, but you're already here, so check this one out. So here goes my two storylines, and I'll be honest with you. The storylines are my favorite part. I love telling the story more than anything else. I love watching the game, but I love telling a story more than anything else, right? Like, that's my bag. Like, that's my lane. If I could just sit here and interview players every single day, I would do it and allow them to tell their story. I would love to do that. So when I have these two storylines in this game specifically, they're great ones. And the first one is just how good is Jackson State? And I know, JSU fans, you probably mad. Typing in the comments, going over to YouTube just to leave a comment if you're on the, on the uh, audio side. Stopping what you're doing. But hear me out. This is a question that has transformed over the matter of the last two weeks. See, before the season started, the question was, is Jackson State good? Then they whooped up on South Carolina State. But that, there was a lot of people, not the majority of people. I think the majority of people acknowledged what I'm going to say. But it was a fair question. Well, is Jackson State that good or is South Carolina State that bad? It happens all the time in week one matchups when we don't know how to feel about either team, and especially when sometimes we're caught off guard. And I don't think many people expected it to go down that way. I don't know the answer to that question. It's a little bit of both, honestly. But you got to credit Jackson State. Everybody makes mistakes, but not all the good teams or not all teams are able to pick up on the mistakes that their opponents makes. So you went from, is Jackson State good? Then is, are they that good or is South Carolina State that bad? But let's fall back. Because the question is now, are they or how good are they? Let's fall back to before the season even started. Jackson State is a good team. That's one thing that I saw. I don't know if it's more JSU or South Carolina State, but Jackson State is a good team. Unquestioned to me. Now the question becomes, how good are they? Are they prepared to be great? If they can beat FAMU, I'm still not going to call them great because for me, Unless I was already kind of crowning you as being a great team before the season, I'm going to need more than two weeks. But I'll tell you what, they beat FAMU. They're more than on their way. They knock off FAMU. They knock off Southern. They knock off South Carolina State in the first three weeks. And especially if they're decisive in two of the three matchups, we might be saying, yeah, they're great. Championship contenders, for real. Back-to-back -back champions, or back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back champions, I really should say. But I think that this game is going to go a long way for that. See, I can write off South Carolina State as a non-quality win if I wanted to. I don't think the opponent made it quality, but I do believe the way that you won made that a quality game. There's no writing off FAMU as a quality victory. See, we might have fell into that trap last year when they should lack FAMU and said, well, is FAMU really that good? They were. And they're rolling over some good pieces. FAMU is a good team. There's no doubt in my mind that FAMU is a quality team. So knocking off FAMU would be a quality win for Jackson State. And if I were to say anything other than that, I'd be moving the goalpost. I ain't moving no goalpost. I'm going to be honest with you. The only way that we can't call this a quality win is if both teams come out and they look bad. Like, sometimes two teams just look bad as sloppy. Like, this just was not good play. 
If that happens, no, I'm not going to credit them. And I don't think Jackson State fans will credit them. You'd be happy that you got a victory. You would probably celebrate in, in front of all the FAMU fans. But overall, no, we're not crediting them for being great. We're not crediting them for being a championship contender. We're going to say they got a lot to prove. But I don't think that this is going to be a game between two sloppy teams. That's just the only way it could happen. South Carolina State might not be good. FAMU, good. Quality, win. So knocking off them or facing them is really kind of a test for many to say, all right, how good are you? We know you're good. I'm not questioning that. Do you have the potential to be great? Do you have the potential to be a championship team for the third year in a row? These are the questions that are going to be answered with whether or not you knock off FAMU. Now, the next one is, can FAMU get over the hump? And I understand. Willie Simmons says he doesn't want, but that, that part doesn't really matter. You can say that all you want, Brother Simmons, but I'm not believing and I'm not buying in a lick. You can't tell me the fact that Jackson State is the only team to beat you since you entered the SWAC. Each year, no one else could beat you. They're the only team that you haven't beat. You can't tell me that doesn't bother you a little bit. I'll tell you why you can't tell me that. First off, every coach trying to say, we just want to go 1-0. and oh. We just worried about the next game. Come on, I'm smarter than that. I'm smarter than that. If you just worry about the next game, why are you on there talking trash with, with Jackson State fans on Twitter? This ain't just another game. Stop it. Bethune-Cookman ain't just another game, and no matter when it's played, it's not just another game. And I'm not calling Jackson State Bethune-Cookman, but I am telling you that Jackson State deserves the treatment of this is not being just, or this not being just another game. I'll tell you that. They ain't Bethune-Cookman. But over the last two years, they're the only thing in your way of a SWAC championship, most likely a celebration bowl appearance. Like, yeah, anything could have happened. It's one of those things where you change one thing in the past, they could have lost another game. Who knows? But as far as the season went, they beat Southern last year. They beat Southern last year. They were a better team than Southern when we saw them face off. They've been a better team than everybody other than Jackson State. So far that they're saying we should have been in the SWAC championship game next to Jackson State. You know we're the two best teams? That's what it's been the last two seasons. But it's not going to happen because you're in the same division. So the question is, in week one, your first action of the, of the season, their second action of the season, can you get over that hump? That's what we want to know. That's the question that we have. It might not matter to you and your team. You might be telling the media that it doesn't matter because I don't believe that it doesn't matter to you and your team, but it matters to us. We want to know, can you get over that hump? Because if you can't, same way how I talk about TSU. Well, I mean, you can't get past PV. I'm not going to be able to feel confident. The only difference between FAMU and Texas Southern is if Texas Southern doesn't get over PV, you might still have a chance to just win the SWAC West, you just didn't beat the team that you just can't get past. If FAMU doesn't beat Jackson State, their hopes at a divisional championship and a conference championship appearance and maybe even a celebration bowl is over. And you look at the schedule, they set it straight up. That's the only thing that we care about. So you don't beat Jackson State. It might be wraps for your season. Now moving forward, I have the key to victory for each game. I'm setting the scene today. I'm selling the fight today. I'm selling the fight today, all right? But I have a key to victory for each team. And for the most part, it's kind of keep doing what you're doing. My dad's going to love that one. But just keep doing what you're doing. But at the same time, you want to make sure that you add something if you're fam you. And we'll dive into exactly what that means as we continue with Locked On HBCU. I had to give me some agua. But I appreciate you. <laughs> I appreciate you making this your first listen of the day every day, making it all the way to segment three. I thank you two times for that. I got to give me another sip of water. I'm out here selling. I'm out here selling the fight, man. I'm out here selling the fight, and the fight it will be. Here goes the key to victory for each, for each fighter in the blue corner. You have Jackson State, the two-time defending SWAC champions, the SWAC MEAC Challenge champions. In 2023, standing at a record of 1-0, and flawless, their key to victory is they need to make sure that they establish the run and even the extended run. Shout out my guy, Ross Jackson, who 
he's the first person I heard use this repeatedly when discussing the New Orleans Saints offensive scheme. You know, that's a mentor of mine. Got a lot of love for him. So I'm going to adopt this phrase that I first heard him use. Um, the extended run is basically the quick pass, the rollout, right? The shout, like shallow rollout. Not I roll out and I throw the ball 15 yards down the field. That's a pass. But I roll out the tight ends, maybe a yard off the line of scrimmage. You have some screens, wide receiver screens, running back screens. You have short passes, basically, right? Easy completions. They're like run plays. All you got to do is not drop the ball, right? That's that's what we call the extended run. And I hope, you know, Ross, be checking out the episode. I hope that I did a good job explaining what the extended run was. But that was really the reason I felt like the offense was able to get into a groove. They ran the ball really well. We already mentioned Irv, Irv Mulligan in our uh, first matchup, our highlight matchup of this game. So they ran the ball effectively, had that big play, but then just consistent running afterwards. Not just big playability, but consistent running. And then also you had short passes that just kept getting you into third and manageable when you had to get the third down. This was a, a to me, this is also helps you have tempo. Because if you're running a bunch of deep routes, if it's not completed, you're not going to have tempo. You know, that's just, that's just not how it is. But you can still kind of run tempo on shorter routes, even if they are incomplete. But overall, the quick passing game, the running game, that allows you to establish your own tempo, establish your own rhythm, and I think that actually hurts the defense as well. If you can keep that pace, it can be difficult sometimes for defenders to be able to keep that pace, and you can't sub in and out. You're keeping them from subbing by rushing to the line. Sometimes it's not even rushing to the line and snapping. It's just rushing to the line so that they can't substitute. The big boys be needing air now, but you can't. they can't run off the field. So, and you know Miami be hot. It's hot in Miami. Am I going to have my phone on me? I don't. I was going to see what the temperature is going to be like out there in Miami Gardens. Like, it's hot in Florida. So the, the fast tempo, that's going to be something that could really affect the defense of FAMU. Now for Florida A&M, because for Jackson State, I said just do what you were doing last week to establish the tempo. Then everything else feeds off of it. Deep shots, 30 manageable, the running game is working. Like, everything works from there. For FAMU, we haven't seen them yet. We haven't really seen what Jackson State's Achilles heel is. So it's hard to point to them doing something specifically to FAMU or specifically to Jackson State. But in the red corner, standing at a record of zero and zero, the angry, the feisty FAMU Rattlers, they need to establish the run as well, but for a different reason. You need to establish the run and trust that you can do what you do well. See, I trust that Jeremy Musa is going to be good. I want to make that the key to victory. But if you can only have Jeremy Musa playing well, uh, you might you might have an ineffective offense. As good as Jeremy Musa is, as much as I like Jeremy Musa, if they know you're passing, they can limit you. I, I do think that Jackson State's defensive backs can do that. But if you establish the run, which is something that they – Invested in heavily over the offseason. If you can establish the run, now you have a multifaceted offense. Now you're not predictable. Now you keep them on their toes. And, of course, all that has to do with dealing with the defensive line, the defensive line can wreck shop. If you can't protect, you can't open up holes, this game is not going to be pretty for your offense. And Jackson State has shown that they have a good defensive line. So you have, you have to. It's imperative that you take care of that. But if you establish that run, and they respect your run, Jeremy Moose will be so much more efficient. And if Jeremy Moose can be efficient, which he wasn't able to be last year, but that was also his first action. He cleaned it up as the season went on. And we can, if we can see the SWAC Offensive Player of the Year, which he is projected to have at the end of the year, if we can see that, then you might see fam, you come out on, on top. But in order to see that, I think it's going to be mandatory that the running game shows up. So we got a good, we have a good game, almost called another fight. But Jackson State versus FAMU, it's been a Swack East heavyweight bout for the last two seasons. And if Jackson State's hype from week zero, if FAMU's hype coming into the season and what they look like on paper is anything to tell, it might be the third year in a row that you're looking at Swack East champions being named in week one. But I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every single day day thank you you are the reason that i do this sincerely if it wasn't for you i wouldn't be on this mic talking the way that i am so thank you for giving me the passion 
And hopefully we can deliver this passion on Monday. I don't know how much we're going to discuss this game. It's going to be either two or three segments. It'll probably be three. But I said it last time, I'm keeping some accountability. And I'll be at the, as I'm saying it really late, and this is a bunch of fam, you and Jackson State people at this point, but I will be at the Texas Southern PV game. So if you're there, holla at me. I'll tweet it out or whatnot. But, um, or post it out. That's what they call it now. But anyway, the point being, we either be talking about this Orange Blossom Classic and this Texas Southern game on Monday, or it'll be all the Orange Blossom Classic. But either way, make sure you're tuning it out. Make or tuning it, tuning in. Don't tune it out. Tune in. Checking it out. Tune in. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate you sincerely. And until the next time that we hear each other, family, you can follow me on Twitter at South Exclusives. Take care. Stay blessed. Peace.